As we mentioned in that story, Islandwood was designed with 4th, 5th, and 6th graders in mind. But for this guy, when he was supposed to be going into 6th grade, he was going into college instead. Here now is the unique story of a boy genius. This is 14-year-old Andrew Sue. You can call him a genius, a prodigy, a brainiac, but next year you can also call him a college graduate. But not one, not two, but three degrees from the University of Washington. All of this before he can even get his learner's permit. They're neurobiology, biology, and biochemistry. He hopes to get his first PhD before he can legally vote. But we wondered how he got here. What was it that sparked the innovation in Andrew's education? He learned to read before he was even two, and he had an uncanny ability to problem solve. Imagine your child of two designing and assembling Lego robots bigger than himself. Andrew's parents knew this wasn't exactly normal. We feel that he's pretty special, but how special we don't know. We just kind of work this out together, and we do this bit by bit. Obviously, he came with a lot when he was born. When I was young, they created a, a very good learning environment for me, and they helped me foster my mind and pretty much just hone my thinking skills. And I think they're a, a major part of why I'm successful today. I can absorb information really quickly, so um, I guess I first realized this when I was young, when I started reading and studying textbooks, I could just understand some difficult concepts pretty quickly. In traditional schools, teachers suggested Andrew skip grades. They gave him independent study time, but no matter what they tried, Andrew was just too advanced for his classmates. At six, he was finally given a standard IQ test, and his score was off the charts. There weren't any socialization problems, but I did notice myself that I was learning more quickly, and I, I knew more things than almost anybody else. We realized that, that I mean, we need to give him something that, uh, that just fit his needs. So we took him home and started homeschool. And then we just came to our conclusion that uh, um, homeschooling is really a good choice for us. After he came home, that's, that's the time he took, um, you know, just took some very big leaps. I think that was a very important point in my life because it suddenly freed me up from, like, the bonds of the public school system. And I was allowed to learn at my own pace, which was a lot faster than that of other students. About Andrew was homeschooled from age 7 to 11. Along the way, he became the youngest student ever to win the grand prize at the Washington State Science and Engineering Fair. About the time most kids his age were excited about going into middle school, Andrew was enrolled at the University of Washington. A lot of my current friends don't actually know how old I am, maybe because I look older than I actually am. I just try to get this notion of age out of my mind because I, I just try to view myself as another student. He may try to blend in here at the University of Washington, but there's no chance of that when Andrew visits Taiwan. He's a celebrity of sorts here, and his arrival sparks a media frenzy. Even posing for a picture can be hazardous to his health. Since he's packed so much into his first 14 years, Andrew decided to share his story in this book. The name of the book is Not Just a Prodigy, the story of Andrew Su. And it's pretty much my autobiography and Taiwan was the first place I was released and it sold a lot of copies and we hope and I, I hope to expand it to China and also publish an English version soon. I went to Taiwan for the book tour in the middle of September and that was in, in a break between two quarters of my school and pretty much I, I went around and talked to children at all sorts of schools from elementary school, first grade, all the way up to college and it was really fun. I'll do it for you. One more. As for fun, back home, Andrew says he relaxes by just hanging out with his family. His brother Patrick is a year younger and in the early interest program at the U. He'll get his first degree at 18. And then there's Benjamin, who's in first grade. I think almost everything I do is fun. Like I like studying science. I like playing board games with 
with my brothers. Oh, and let's not forget swimming. Andrew was also a prodigy in the pool. A couple of years ago, he was ranked fourth in the nation in the 100-yard butterfly. But he had to hang up his goggles. It seems swimming was getting in the way of hitting the books. But besides moving swimming over to the leisure side of the ledger, Andrew doesn't really see a downside of being a prodigy. I've really seen no drawbacks to, um, to being gifted intellectually. This way, I'm... I can learn faster than a lot of other people and just absorb as much knowledge as I can, which I really like. In the future, I want to become um, a medical doctor and a research scientist, and probably my ultimate goal is to um, help find the cures for a lot of diseases that currently plague mankind. I think probably my idols are um, Albert Einstein and Marie Curie just because of their incredible prowess in science, but I also admire people like Lance Armstrong because he just doesn't give up. And I think that's kind of the attitude that I have also. I'm a really persistent kind of person. And I think if I keep on persisting on a problem, then I can solve pretty much everything. Now, in addition to all the accomplishments we just told you about, Andrew and his brother Patrick operate the foundation for the World Children's Organization. Its mission is to provide education to the world's underprivileged children. And you can find out more by visiting his website at andrewsu.com.